What is going on, Obscure Mike people? It's Bart coming at you yet again with another video. And uh, today it's going to be fairly cut and dry, fairly simple. But I want to explain why as an audio person, as a mic enthusiast, as an audio gear enthusiast, I will probably never switch from my trusty Android device. Now, this is going to be a little bit about that and kind of a double purpose video. I'll also kind of do a quick review, a simple yes or no on the Tascam 1x2 HR, which is a uh, less than $100 interface, $89. And the more I see people in the Discord talking about uh, interfaces and what they should get, like, yes, I've done some reviews like the CAD CX2, the Taeyun Q12, but I want to say right now that if your budget can support something close to $100, without going over, this might actually be what you want. Now, I always have the glass half full mentality, like the Taeyun Q12, not perfect, but for 20 bucks, I've seen some people getting it for 15. It's hard to complain because it does a lot. Uh, the CAD CX2, the Connect CX2, 69 bucks, two, two XLR ports, can drive an SM7B, hard to complain, but if you are a individual creator and you want something that will absolutely drive an SM7B very cleanly, has great dynamic range as seen on Julian Krause's video of the 2x2HR, I believe. This is one that's really hard to beat. Now, why am I using this device as a double review for this and why I use Android phones as an audio person? Well, I'll tell you. Android phones or Android tablets for that matter, or I'm guessing USB-C iPhone devices, which is, well, I think I saw something to where the USB-C on the new iPhones when that happens in tablets are going to operate the same as a lightning port. So maybe they those won't supply power to devices. iPhones, you need more power than just what comes from the lightning port. That's why a device like this has a tablet port right here. It's a little micro USB. You can power it and hook anything up to it, so no need to be bus powered. But Android devices, for the most part, in my experience, will power bus powered devices. So this Tascam 1x2HR, which is a absolute beast of a little interface that is built well, it's all metal, it, it's supplying enough power for the D421, which is real close to the SM7B in terms of how much gain it requires. This is running straight into my Motorola Edge 2022, USB-C to USB-C. And what's great about that immediately off the bat is I'm using that phone to do this video. So I don't need to do any kind of clap in or audio sync. It's already done because the video being recorded is recording directly to the video, like from the interface directly to the video. And that is convenient to me. Actually, most of my videos, at least over the past year, have been done with a phone in some sort because I'm not really a video guy. I think that's obvious because my videos are not, you know, Tom Buck or audio hotline quality. Shut up, computer. And that's okay with me. I'm not out to prove that I'm some kind of master video editor. It's all about the audio for me. And, uh, I will say I do love watching a beautiful video. So Tom and Bronson produce some great stuff and uh, I, I enjoy it, but that's just not my gig. Anyways, let's get back to it. So Android USB-C devices are going to power just about everything USB bus powered. The Tascam 1x2HR works beautifully. The Elgato Wave uh, XLR works beautifully. The Vocaster 1 from Focusrite, which is on my desk, works beautifully. Seriously, just about every device that's bus powered works, but there's a caveat. Behringer UM2, uh, even this Tascam 1x2HR, anything that has multiple inputs. So even if it's just an instrument jack separate from the XLR, that is by default going to come into just the left or right channel on your recording through a phone. But there's a way around this. First, let me just give an example. The Wave XLR from Elgato, that has one XLR input and nothing else. There's no other inputs. It comes through mono 
pretty much defaultly. So that's a wonderful device if you don't want to mess with any other complications to just plug straight into your phone and record audio and it sounds like you had it plugged into your computer. For like a Behringer UM2, a uh, Tascam 1x2HR, other bus powered devices that have an input jack or another XLR or you know has the ability to set separate tracks in a doll, Literally all you have to do in most cases, and that is the case with this right here, is use the Sure Motive video app, which I'm using right now. It gives you waveforms on the screen. It gives you, uh, I've got a mono signal, even though if I recorded this with my regular camera app, it would just come through one side. So it's a very useful tool to do video and you can download a lot of audio recording apps like Wave Editor, that you can just go into the settings and set everything to be mono, and that's just what's going to happen. So even though there's the caveat of if you don't completely fine-tune everything, you could just get audio on one side. Sorry, microphone, that's my bad. There's still a lot of ways around it, and again, if it's a bus-powered device, you're going to be able to hook it up to your Android phone nine times out of ten and record whatever you want to record. So that is one reason why I am not an iPhone person, one of many actually, but Android just has so many more unlimited features in my opinion. I'm not here to do an Android video by any means, but this is just a, a thought of mine. Like if you don't want to spend a ton of money on a camera, you don't like the quality from a web camera because phones are going to be webcams every time. As long as you've got a decent one, it's going to smoke a webcam nine times out of 10 and you can run your audio directly in and with proper lighting and such, you're going to get a nice solid picture. That's already kind of processed. That's the thing about phones. If I was to use the best video phone on the market, which I don't know what that is, but up in my studio where I have the TV behind me, I use a Samsung S 20 F E. And I think that gives me really good quality. Is it sharper and better than people using mirrorless and DSLRs? No, it's not. But I've had compliments on how good certain videos look certain because most of mine look like shit. I hope you heard that. Ohio, land of the free, home of the guns. Bang, 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 bang. A neighbor just reeling them off. But anyways, I digress. I've had comments saying, what camera are you using? The video looks great. Now, I see those and I laugh because I'm never using anything special. It's always, almost always a phone, and it's always an Android phone. But I can understand where certain things do look good because there's a lot of different quality spectrums on YouTube. And again, with proper lighting, a phone is going to do really well, and some people may be fooled. Some people. Guys that know video, they're probably not going to be fooled. But... The fact of the matter is you can make really good video content and audio content with just an Android phone and a bus powered interface in the Sure Motive video app. You're going to be good to go. Now let's talk about the Tascam 1x2 HR. Again, this thing is like $89 most places. I'll put a link in the description down below. This is probably an interface I should use all day, every day. It should be my daily driver, but I'm terrible about switching over to different interfaces. But uh, not going to go super in-depth. It's a simple yes or no on this device. You've got an XLR port on the front. You have a gain knob. The knobs are solid. Everything about this device is solid. You've got an instrument jack over here as well with a volume for that. And then you also have a switch here for line or instrument. And then you've got your headphone monitoring and your uh, quarter-inch jack, which I've got adapted to a 3.5. And you also have your, uh, well, your headphone monitoring there, but then you got your line out volume and uh, nothing special here. Black and red, My Chemical Romance style on the back. And then on the uh, the rear of the device, you've got that tablet port. So if you want to chart, like power this with a external source and then plug this into an iPhone, iPad, whatever you want, you can do that. That's a good feature. Direct monitoring on or off. Input select, you can go front or rear because you can use the line ends. They're not quarter inch, but it's 89 bucks and so far so good. Line out, and then we've got a 48 volt phantom power switch here as well. This thing has amazing dynamic range for its price. 
it is not turned all the way up and is powering the D421 perfectly with virtually no hiss at all. I'll go ahead and turn it the rest of the way up so you can hear if there's any hiss there. Now it doesn't overly drive it like I can still talk at normal levels. I have lowered my voice a little bit, but it is maxed out, but it doesn't have to be maxed out. But once again, some silence for preamp noise. All right, I just cut it down to about 95%. Like you, it doesn't have a stepping issue by any means. I'll talk while I turn it up. It, no stepping issue here at all. You can slowly taper it back and it works really well. But I like to hit a certain level in my headphones. It's like I've got this uncanny ability to know when I'm hitting negative 12 dB. Maybe that's just because I use so much shit all the time and I'm just used to knowing what 12 dB sounds like in my ears. Or maybe I'm full of shit. I don't know. But anyways, this will drive any mic you got with great dynamic range. The headphone out is beautiful. It really pushes the actual sound of the mic and your voice into your headphones. No over boosting. It's, it's a very flat headphone out to my ears. This is absolutely for 89 bucks. And again, let me preface this by saying all of the devices I have said are great. You've got to remember with obscure mics, I am talking about for the price. I'm never going to tell you to get a Taeyun Q12 over a device like this. I'm never going to tell you to get a CAD CX2 over a device like this, unless there's a special use case. I'm going to go dollar per dollar. Is this great? Is it worth it? Is it not? Dollar per dollar on the Tascam 1x2 HR is exponentially worth it because it is a rock solid solo interface. If you're going solo or at, by the way, there's also software and you can do loop back and you can set mono and stereo through the software on a PC, but you've even got loop back. This thing's got a nice little chunk of software you can download for it with some nice controls. It's a rock solid interface, metal, heavy, little yellow. What was that? A leave? I'd be, if some kind of ibuprofen, if you're from the 90s, little yellow different. Maybe that was it. Anyways, this thing is phenomenal for the price. It is absolutely phenomenal. If you're just wanting to get going, recording, have gain for days, and have no issues, no hiss, no dynamic range issues, this is probably the best interface available for one person for under $100. In my opinion, you can ask uh, Ellis if you watch this video, comment. He's got the 2x2 HR. He bought it based off Julian Krauss's recommendation, and Krauss nailed that one. He was correct about everything on it, as he always is. But Ellis is very happy with his. I'm very happy with mine, even though I don't use it all that much, because I've got other devices I'm always testing, so on and so forth, you know, from big to small. Oh, what was that? Something coming up. But if you are able to spend $89 and you want that SM7B or RE20 or whatever mic you want and you want to know that the headphones are going to be great, that the gain is going to be great, the sound is going to be great and it's going to be quiet, this is absolutely the way to go. The Tascam 1x2 HR or 2x2 HR if you need two XLR inputs. If you bought something before this based off my recommendation, I'm sorry. It is literally based off how much these things cost and the CAD CX2, still great for 69 bucks. The Taeyun Q12, still great, especially when people have got it for 15 bucks. Great for 15. Not great overall, as in it's going head to head with $100 and up. It's like, can you get any better for 15 to $20? Not yet, probably, as far as a 2XLR mixer goes. But I digress. Android phone, bus powered device, match made in heaven. Tascam 1x2 HR, is it good enough? Simple yes or no? Hell yes, it is easily good enough. This is literally the best interface you can buy under $100 for one person to my current knowledge. Obscure mics, I hope you enjoyed this more ranty and just needed to create edition of Obscure Mics. Reminds me of some of the comments, just a few that say I like to hear myself talk, and uh, well, maybe I do. I don't know. I like creating content. So be it. 
I like the Tascam 1x2HR. I like Android phones. I like the versatility they provide. If you want to throw all this shit in a bag and go record somewhere without any external power source or a big old laptop. I love it. Secure mics. Peace out.